Okay, so we are going to talk about <laughs> uh, the duality and in particular group duality. What is duality? What does it mean? It's an English word. So native speakers are out, non-native speakers are in. What does it mean, duality? What, what, what does this word mean in English? You are a native speaker, so you, you are out. <laughs> what does it mean? What, what, what's this duality? I don't, I'm not interested in the etymology of the word. Okay, it comes from Latin, it means some, something connected to two. But what does it mean? In English, can you describe? Okay, even native speakers are in. There's only one native speaker here. <laughs> Do something and get back where you started? Or what? Duality? No, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about the maths. I'm talking oh, about the English word, the duality. Even in philosophy, right? Oh, even in philosophy. What does it mean in philosophy? No, I didn't do philosophy. Oh, you didn't do philosophy. I think it means by steps, right? Oh, yeah, students, I think. Uh, actually, yes, yes. So what comes to my mind is a photon. I mean, it, has, it can behave as a wave as a particle. So it has this duality. Uh huh. Okay, okay. So I looked it up. I looked it up, it's not used. In English, duality is not used, it's not really used. It's used as a technical term only, and when it's used as a technical term, it's um, physics, mathematics, philosophy, or, or uh, psychiatry. <laughs> we're, we're not going to talk about that now. So duality is something like a dichotomy in, in, in common parlance. So either this or that, okay. So let's come to, to the mathematical usage. So what does it mean? Uh, in mathematics. What's duality in mathematics? You've seen many, many instances of duality. So you must be... You associate an object to another object and you do it twice to get back to where you do it. Uh-huh. Yes, or hope to. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so this is, this is, this is really good. So it's translating... Um, some concepts, um, phenomena to, to other concepts, phenomena, and hoping to get it back if we do it twice. But do we, what, do we, what do we expect from a duality? Okay, if we do it twice to get back, but it's not, I mean, it would be like a uh, bijection. But we, we, we want something more. There is some correspondence between the operations. There is some correspondence between the operations, yes. So it should preserve, should preserve something. Essentials. Okay. Okay, I don't think we can really classify what it means in general, uh, the duality. I'm going to describe a few dualities, which most of you, most of you know, and then we go on to, to the groups. So, so one example is the poset duality. So if you have a poset, P, What's the dual pose set? Yeah, so the same set with a different uh, relation, binary relation, so that now A is smaller than or equal to B, if and only if originally B was smaller than or equal to A. Okay, so it's the same upside down. Okay, so the, ha the Hasse diagram Uh, is upside down. Okay. Now this is a very important principle, this upside down. What is the dual vector space? Uh, 
What's the dual vector space? The space of linear function. The space of linear function. So if V is a space, then, okay, it's a space over F, then this is the dual space. And what's the property, what's the good property of the, the dual space? Hmm? It's complete. Uh, the, the original was complete with the dual. Okay, 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 okay. Very good. I wanted to say that the, the, the dual is isomorphic to the original space. Oh, I forgot something. Okay, so that's the that's the main that's the main point. And uh, this isomorphism is not natural. Oh, by the way, if I make mistakes during the talk and you spot it, you get a reward. You want the natural? Okay, you've got the reward. I didn't know I have to make clues. <laughs> it's, uh, this is always true, okay? If you listen to a talk and the, the, the speaker makes a mistake, there's 50% chance that the mistake was intentional. If I make the talk, this is 100% chance that it was intentional. <laughs> With other people, it's sometimes uh, smaller. Okay, it's very important. If you pick, if you pick up on a, on a mistake, it's not because you are now proving that you are clever. It's because it was intentional to draw attention to, to, the, to this point. Okay, so this holds only for, for, finite, for finite dimensional. Precisely. Because of the completeness principle which you, which, you, which you claim. Okay, but this isomorphism, this isomorphism here, is not, not canonical. Um, so the proof of this isomorphism is basically that they have the same dimension. But the, 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 dual, the double dual space, there is a, a natural isomorphism. Again, in the finite dimensional case. But there is more to, there is more to it than just uh, saying that they are isomorphic. Because there is this annihilator idea that if, if W, it can be just a subset of V, then we can take the annihilator of, of W, let's denote it by W0. That's the collection of those functionals in V star that vanish on W. Okay, so whether W is a, is a set or the subspace generated by that set, it's the same. And then, say if W1 is contained in W2, then of course, W1 circle will contain this W2 circle. So here we again have this upside down phenomena. Even more is interesting. So if, if W is really a subspace of V, then the dual space of the factor space is 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 <laughs> so what does it mean conceptually? The dual space of the the the, the factor space. What does it mean? Yes. So what's that? It's W zero. So okay, we cannot say they are equal because this is meant to be a subset of V star. So it's, let's say they are isomorphic. But the conceptually, it's not just isomorphic. They are the same. The same, but, uh, but not exactly in, within the same language. <clears throat> OK. Now if we have the vector space, then we have the module. Dual module. So we've got our ring, 
and M, say a right R module. Then what's the dual module? Similarly, now it's home R, uh, M, R, right? This is, now this becomes a left, a left R module. So with the same principle, <coughs> we say if F, F is an element of this home, sp uh, home space, then R times F acting on M should be F acting on MR. So why should it be a left module? Because RS acting on F, M, it must be uh, F, M, R, S, which is S, F, M, R which is R, S, F, M. So, so this, this way we preserve the, the, the order. Okay, so have you seen this definition of the dual module? There. Where have you seen this definition of the dual module? If it's in a book, then you probably have to throw away the book. Because it's so nice that it becomes a left module, but it's not a module. That's the main problem with it. It doesn't become a module, because even though it's so nice, but if you try, try it, try it for yourself. Okay, we're not going to go it. Go, go through this here. It's, you cannot make this meaningful to be to be R equivariant. Okay, so. This, although very nice, it doesn't make sense. So I get the next lollipop. So instead, we have to somehow, unfortunately, there is no general definition of, of, uh, of the dual module. If R is nice, then one can define the, the dual module. And this we can do, for example, for, for uh, group algebra modules. So for, for group algebra modules, this works. Say M star is home F M uh, F. Oh, F, M, F, yes. So M is a vector space, so we can talk about the dual vector space. And this dual vector space is, is a module. Uh, the, um, so F, we have to define FG. Now G is an element of, of the group algebra. Okay, so the group algebra is, say, FG. This acting on M is F acting on M. G inverse. Okay, so I, I want to preserve the, 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 this to be a right, a right module. So this will also become a right module if I use this definition. Okay, that does that serves the same purpose as making it into a left module. Okay, but F is F is in M star and G is in G. Sorry. Okay, so G is a, gr a group element. Now, this works because we don't have to worry about actions on the module because they are just F homomorphisms, okay? <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. Um, and similarly, this can be translated into the representation, the, the, uh, to the language of representations, into the language of representations. So 
So we have, say, a representation of Fg into GLM, then rho star is a representation into the same to the same space. Maybe I should denote it with V, which won't confuse it with the module. To the same space, <coughs> but rho star of G is now rho G, so G inverse transpose. So if I do, uh, I take the inverse. Hmm? Well, what? It's a right module. Hmm? No, I don't understand. So if I say FGA is M, then it's FM A inverse G inverse. Yes? Oh, oh, oh sorry. Never mind. No, we went through this computation here. So it's. If I write, uh, so if I want this to become a left module, then I can write GF is MG, okay? But if I want to preserve it as a right module, I have to do this. This is because FG is a symmetric algebra, so it's, uh, this is symmetric. So really, your left modules and right modules are the same. But we have to, uh, inverted to G. Okay, so and this is this is also the same. Again, this this uh, transposition comes to so that it acts on the same space, on the same uh, same direction. Okay. And similarly, so the dual character corresponding to the representation, which is just the trace in the, in in case when F is the complex, the field of complex numbers. So chi g, so chi star of g is chi g bar. <coughs> because the inverse has the, the eigenvalues are the inverse uh, roots of unities, which is the same as the complex conjugates of the roots of unities. Okay, but so far, all these affected really the space the space of, of uh, the vector space, the, the, this vector space on which there is an action, at, that turns it upside down. And this upside down is really governed by this isomorphism. You can, you can also think about that. But now we want to uh, step to a different plane, and that will be the group duality. Um. Okay, so people observed the following. There are many, many, uh, so many, many theorems. Uh, that hold for conjugacy classes also hold slightly uh, different versions for, for characters. So, I'm going to give you examples of, of, of this phenomena uh, later. Think about uh, uh, theorems like if you take uh, two conjugacy classes and you multiply them, that's going to be a union of conjugacy classes. I could say. And then if you take two characters, you multiply them, it's going to be a sum of, of characters. And how this behaves are, are related. It's not very well understood how they are related. But if there is a result which holds for them, usually there is a, 
an accompanying result which holds for the other. It's not, it's not always the same. I give you, I give you now uh, two instances. One is when they are the same. It's a result by Chillag. 99, I got 99, yes. So if G is not perfect and G prime is also not perfect, then uh, there exists a conjugacy class. C conjugacy class of G such that such that the is at most 2m, the m is the maximum of zeros. in a row of the character table. And he proved that if uh, if it has no non-trivial center and the G over the center is also non-trivial, then there exists an irreducible character such that g over chi 1 square is at most 2m prime. The m prime is the maximum of zeros in a column. the character table. Really, really, they, ha they have the same flavor, and even the proofs are uh, of the same flavor. I give you another instance which shows that, albeit they are very similar, but they can be distinguished, distinguished a lot. This is a result of uh, <coughs> Fernandes Arkober. And Moreto, two years later, that if R and S are integers, positive integers, then there exists a P group of class two with exactly r different <coughs> sizes of conjugacy classes and r different character degrees. Uh, Z2G is uh, the center of G over the center. is a normal subgroup of the factor group. And that's called, that's, that's the CTG. Okay, so take the factor group, G over the center. It has a center. Sometimes it has trivial center, sometimes not. And this center is called ZTG in the original group. Okay, the pre-image of this group in the original group is called Z2G. And then similarly, Z3G is the pre-image and so on. And if G is near potent, then this, this uh, sequence of, of subgroups reaches G. If G is not near potent, then it stops somewhere. And where it stops, it's called the hypercenter. Uh, the class, ah, this is, th that means that it reaches, oh, okay. that Z2G is G itself. So, uh, so that means that Z2G is G. 
That means that G over the center is a billion. So it's very close to being a billion. If G is a billion, then it has only one conjugacy class size, one, and only one character degree, one. So just going beyond that, it's possible to achieve anything. <clears throat> okay. So the real question is, and we are not going to be able to answer this question, how exactly are these yeah, costs? <laughs> Which? So there are R different sizes of conjugacy classes and S, sorry, <laughs> thanks. And S different uh, character degrees. Okay, whatever R and S, they can be completely unrelated. So the real question is, what is exactly the nature of this correspondence, this duality between characters, irreducible characters, and conjugacy classes? They are, they are not the same because results suggest that they are, not, they are not in complete duality. But still, the nature of this duality should be somehow understood. So I'm going to give you uh, one way of trying to, to understand it. Uh, and this is the following. So we've got one matrix where they are really, really related. And this is the character table. So let now G be cyclic group of order three. Then the character table is the matrix. Now everyone should know what the character table is because yet it's included in, the, in, the, in the, the end of the year exam, in the first year here. So it's a, uh, the, the number of rows and the number of columns is the same as the number of conjugacy classes of G. So here it's, uh, it's three. The, sorry. I ah, know that's why we are talking about. Uh, pardon me. So this zeta is a, a third root of unity. And these are the, the irreducible characters. And these correspond to these columns represent the, the, the conjugacy classes. And each entry is the, the value of the irreducible character at that particular element of the conjugacy class. Because it's a class function, it doesn't matter on which element we evaluate it. <coughs> now the fact uh, <laughs> so there is no in general there is no dual module, but for for groups that means for for Z modules, for modules over the integers, there is duality. And that is on over the integers G to this abelian group. So complex functionals and viewed as, uh, as uh, homomorphisms of abelian groups. This gives an isomorphism with G, which means that the, these linear functionals form a group. They are one-dimensional characters, one-dimensional representations. We can multiply them, and the product is also one-dimensional. Also, it's a homomorphism. So like the product of these two is the first one. Right, because we have to multiply element-wise. One times one is one. Zeta times zeta squared is one. Zeta squared times zeta is one. Okay, so this becomes a group, and this is the fact that they are isomorphic, and this fact that they are isomorphic is uh, this can be seen from the from the character table. I'm not going to go, go through a full proof here, but from the character table, you can see the orders of the elements. So what are the uh, respective orders of the elements of the, the group? And the, the orders of the elements of the group describe the abelian group up to isomorphism. So if you take this as the original group, from these columns, which represent 
the, the elements of the group. You see the order of them. When you transpose this, that is the, the linear functionals, the elements of the dual group, become the, the, the elements of the new group, that is the character table is transposed, still the, the, the orders of the elements are the same. Okay, from, from a cyclic group, it's very obvious because the, we can arrange the, the, the rows and the columns so that it's, uh, it's a self-transpose matrix. Now let's try to, try to improve on this. Try to generalize this, and this is the, what I wanted to, to, uh, to determine now. So if we have S3, this is again three times three, it has three conjugacy classes. One is the identity element. This is of the, say, a three cycle, and this is of the two cycle. And we have, we've got three irreducible characters. One is the trivial. The second is the sign. Okay, these are the even elements. This is the odd element. And there is a two-dimensional representation, which, is, which comes from S3 being the, the symmetry group of the triangle, of the equi uh, equilateral triangle. Uh, and then this is, these are the traces. Now, if you try to uh, transpose this character table, what does it become? becomes one, 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 minus one, two, minus one, zero. Obviously, this is not a character table, because in every character table, there's a trivial character. Now, this is not the trivial character. Also, um, there might be other problems, but this is very, very close to being itself, only that the two and the one interchange. So I, there, is a, there is a hope that we can slightly manipulate it to become a character table. So how to make this, how to recognize if this is close to a character table or not. So if, uh, if we want to make this into a character table of another group, then we have to do two things. First, we have to make sure that this becomes the trivial character. And we do it by dividing each of these columns by the leading term. OK? So first, divide each column so that the first row becomes one, 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 one. Okay, so let's do that with this. One, 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 minus one, one, minus one, half, zero. And second, we have to multiply each row by its new character degree, okay? The, here, the character degrees are one, but there sh they should not be one. They should have some proper character degree. So multiply each row by the new character degree. Okay, so we divide it by the character degree in each column, we have to multiply by the new character degrees. So that is one, one, one. Say a, a minus a half, b minus b, zero. Okay? Now we have, we have uh, two degrees of freedom. Can we, can we arrange a and b so that this is the uh, character the uh, character table of a group. OK. 
can we or can we not? Why? Ah, yes, OK, OK, very good. So these two columns are orthogonal, which means that 1 plus a squared minus b squared is 0. Very good. And then we can do the same for the first and the last columns. So 1 minus a squared half is also 0. Now, of course, this is nonsense for a, b integers. But, but that does not only show this, but also show what is a, what is a squared? a squared should be 2, right? And b squared should be 3. b squared should be 3. OK, there, are no in, there is no integer solution. But why 2 and why 3? Why 2 and why 3? There must be some reason why 2 and 3. And that is because in the original group, this was a conjugacy class of size 2, and this is a conjugacy class of size 3. So in fact, so what comes out that if for any group, we can do this, then the new character degrees are the square roots of the conjugacy class sizes. So in particular, the conjugacy classes should have square size. Now this, this is absolutely, no, nothing is known about that. What kind of groups have a, a square conjugacy classes, no one knows. I mean, no one knows. We know that some of them don't have, and some of them do have. So it's not, it's not something which is, which is very rare, but it's rare. So for example, Ivan Andrush proved that simple groups, simple non-abelian groups, uh, are not like this. But there are many P groups with this property. Of course, abelian groups have this property, but abelian groups, the du this duality works pretty well. Hmm? It's a rare property. It's a rare property in every sense of the word. <laughs> Say it again. No, 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 no. <coughs> no there, there are always these negatives. So, so it's like p squared minus one, which is <laughs> not a square. So it doesn't really help. It doesn't really have. The, the, the most example I know are p groups. And then, of course, if you have two p groups and the direct product, we'll have the same property. But it's not, uh, it's not something you, you, you just find. You have to search for and, uh, and find. OK. So this, is, this, is, this shows that this is going to be a very rare case if, the, if, if there is at all uh, a similar duality. And, and we also proved. There are some cases where, yes, this works. But even, even, even for p groups defined over, over fp, not over fp squared. So I don't, uh, I, I don't see any indication why defining over p squared would be better. OK, so the other, the other thing I wanted to mention is the normal subgroups. 
if you have a normal subgroup of a group, it can be, de it can be described using either the columns or the rows of the character table. So if n is a normal subgroup of G, then n is the intersection of certain kernels of irreducible characters, especially those kernels that contain n. Or n is a union of conjugacy classes, those conjugacy classes that are in, in n. So this description involves the rows, and that description involves the columns. Now, we are running out of time, so I'm not going to give you fully the description how it translates into the, into the transpose, but we have the same phenomena as here. With no, no isomorphism, but at least the degree is preserved. So this, let's call this an N circle, uh, normal, so, uh, so to N, there corresponds an N circle in this dual group. G star, defined using, if you have the correspondence between the old characters and the new conjugacy classes, and the old conjugacy classes and the new characters, then this can be, this turns into defining a new normal subgroup there. And the index is, is the old order, which is, which is pretty much the same as, as this. There's no isomorphism generally. And at this, the center of G corresponds to commutator subgroup of G star. And building on this, with, with lots of uh, difficulties, one can show that, that uh, if G is solvable, and this G star exists, then G is nilpotent. Okay, so in a, in a way, how the this this uh, central series works becomes connected to how the commutator series works. Okay, but in fact, but to prove this is much much more difficult if G is any and there exists the G star, then G is nilpotent. Okay, for that, there's no, the only proof we know is to use is uh, P modular character theory. Okay, so there are very few, and actually, Andrush, there, are, there are some, uh, some groups for which this is known, investigated about 20 years ago, and then there are some new groups which, uh, which Ivan discovered. So, okay, this is, a, this is a definition for a group duality which works for some cases. But much more important than this is, is that this understanding of how to relate characters and conjugacy classes leads to, to, to understanding how old proofs can be translated. I give you one, one example which we uh, which we found, there is a, a CRM of Robinson five years ago that if we know the number of solutions of equations of this kind, for every n that was the size of g. Okay, so say if n is one, that means how many, how many pairs of elements of the group exist, a1, b1, that commute. If n is two, it means the product of two commutators, how many ways can this be one, and so on. We know all the solutions for such a question, then that means that we know the uh, the, char the, the character decrees with multiplicity. With multiplicity. So we know that how many linear characters, how many characters of degree two, and so on and so on. 
So we prove the following. So this is Andrus. Andrus. Yes. And me. Uh, that if we know the number, uh, actually, the multiplicity of the trivial character in pi of n for every n up to g, and pi is the sum of high, high uh, conjugate for every reducible of g. This is a permutation character of g acting on itself by conjugation, this pi. Okay, but that, that can be written as, a, as this sum. So if you know all this information, then we know the, so we know the sizes of conjugacy classes with multiplicity. And in fact, so although the proof was motivated by this earlier proof, we gave a, a much more simple, a much simpler proof than, than Robinson originally gave, and it translates back, back and forth very easily. And it gives, uh, all these kind of things give, give insight into how this, uh, this duality works. I think I'm running out of time, so I finish here. Uh, you can have questions.